I am Matteo Collina, and I'm here today to talk to you about Fastify. Uh, please take a moment to follow me on Twitter at Matteo Collina. I tweet about, you know, Node.js development and a bunch of other things. So yeah, maybe you can find it interesting. Anyway, we are here to talk about Fastify. This is, uh, you know, we are all remote. It's all distributed around the globe. So this talk, I'm going to try something that I normally don't try on stage. So maybe let's see how, how, it, how, it, how it goes. So first of all, uh, um, Fastify is a web framework that uh, um, myself and Thomas de la Vedoa started uh, back in 2016. And uh, now it's coming up to be the major version 3, and which is going to be uh, released uh, soonish. Anyway. Um, how do you install it? NPM install Fastify. And you can, uh, you know, uh, it's actually very easy to use. However, we are not going to talk a lot about it, but we are going to actually use it to actually build a very, very simple uh, app. So first of all, we can just start by, you know, having our own server and we can uh, import Fastify. Oh, by the way, folks, I... Ooh, I am going to use a node 14. Um, why? Because I want to use the new uh, ESM features of uh, of node core. So you know, so that's that's what we are going to use. So we can do um, import Fastify from Fastify. Then I can create my app, and and then I can do app dot listen on port 3000 whoa okay so maybe this server oh and vm use 14 hey so uh, this server has started and then i can curl it and then oh well root not found yeah we didn't add any so that makes total sense um however we also if you look at it it also didn't log anything so maybe we just want to add a little bit of a logger here so, um, which is probably useful. So we can do logger true and we can start it back. Oh, now it says server listening. It logs in new line delimited JSON. It uses another library called Pino to log. Still, we are getting some output out of it. However, if we are in development, what you can actually do is do pretty print true only in development. And if we do this, we will get a little bit more nicer output out of it. Note that it just logs twice for each request, logs when a request comes in and when a request comes out. Pretty nice and handy. Okay, so that's uh, our uh, uh, that's the basic of our app. We have started Fastify. So what we are up to it now is what we want to do is uh, we can actually split it up because you know we can just code on one single server. So what we are going to do is uh, we are going just to do to call another file called app.js. So what we do is use as per default, and then we create what we call a Fastify plugin. Um, so and my app. So app. And we can uh, add our routes here. For example, get slash and then a sync and then return hello word. Hey, I'm a single quote person. So anyway, so that's it. Uh, I have, we are in here. So if I restart this and then I curl, whoa still don't oh i need to actually load this so what i can do i can do app register i can use import because we're doing esm right so uh, app.js and then here we go okay now it's working again um yeah we have moved this to one other file but you know this is still a little bit bespoke and a little bit more um uh, complicated. So one of the things that we can do is um, we can actually use a module called uh, uh, we can instead of putting our routes in our file in our single file, we can actually do something a little bit better. So 
So first of all, I'm going to comment this app because we're going to use it later. And I'm going to register one module, which is actually very handy, which is called Fastify Autoload. And I need to tell it where, what, what file, what we want to load, in fact. So I'm going to get an utility that I have uh, prepared, which is called uh, DSM. And it will actually give me a join method, which I can just pass in the URL of this current file, which starts from fly, file colon slash slash whatever. And then I can concatenate it to routes. Know that if I want to do something different, you know, it will be a long, long list. So I don't want to really do that. So I'm going to create a routes folder. And then in the routes folder, I'm going to create a, um, a, a hello.js file. In my hello.js file, I'm going to and copy this block here. Again, I still need my plugin here. So here we go. And then we can do this. Whoa. And then I can close it up. Whoa. Here we go. So essentially what we are doing here, we are registering Fastify to load, which is and pointed to a directory, our routes, and then all of those routes will be loaded. So let's see if all this still all work. It will crash. Oh, of course it crashes. Must be a function or a promise. So what did I did wrong? Because that's typically very common that I do something wrong in here. So I have my export default here and routes where it is. So this file is here, server import app.js, my app. Um, I am importing my file. Here we go. And it is um, hmm. plugin. Oh, let's try this. Yeah, okay. You wanted a function name. Okay, so um, here we go. We have started this and now it's still all working fine. Okay, so what we can do now is uh, we can, uh, you know, create a little bit more stuff. So, for example, you can create a b c dash d dot js, for example. So a, so in this file here, uh, you see we have created a little bit of a directory structure, and then hello from d. Um, now, if we go here, here and restart, you can actually see A, B, C, D, O, oh, A, B, C, and then that's D, that's D dot JS. So as you can see, uh, with using Fastify Autoload, we can actually, um, oh, just, yeah, by using Fastify Autoload, we can, um, open up this file and down to um, and load it up from the ABCD from the ABC folder. Okay, so let's move one step forward. Now if what if I want to write a unit test for example, let's create a new test.js file. Now I'm going to use a, a very simple uh, a very simple utility that here we go. A very simple, uh, a very simple utility that it's actually very very handy, which is uh, it's called Tape. I am a fan of very easy test tools, so 
I don't know, I am, hopefully you are like that too, but if you don't, you can use whatever you want. So I need tape, I need Fastify, and then I will need my app. So note that I'm actually not creating the server, but I'm actually loading my apps uh, uh, in, a, in a separate way. So what I can do is, for example, load the hello world. Well, I can test a lower. So I want to test my lower function. So I'm using an async function here. And then I'm using e deep equal. Here we go. And then we can do create a server, which is my Fastify server. And then we can do register. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to pass app in here, which is our Fastify plugin. So I'm going to put that, that plugin in. Um, then what I need, what, what we can do now is we can away, we can get, we can call our server using our internal testing utility. So we can do await uh, server.inject and slash, which is our, our, our route. And then we can do deep equal res JSON and then specify the fact that we want hello word. Here we go. So, uh, and then what we need to do, we need to remember to, to close our server. So we are doing this. Now we can run no test and, oh, where did I put this? Test. Oh, yeah. So if you're using ESM, you need to pass an extension, right? Remember that. Okay. So you see our tests are is passing. Tests should be deeply equivalent. So it's actually working fine. Now we can actually also add one more thing here and about A, B, C, D as we wanted. Test A, B, C, D. So what we can do, A, B, C, and then hello from D. And this should work the same. Okay, so we have added a little bit of, uh, uh, a little bit of things. So now we want to create some block of routes that are protected. So what I'm doing, I'm create a folder called protected and an index.js in here. And in this index.js, what um, what we are doing to do is export a default async function admin maybe whatever and then app which is our fastify app what we are going to do now is um, in here we want to add some 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 dif some folders some uh, endpoints so but before that, we need to configure authentication, our authentication system. In here, what we want, we want to add another import called JWT, for example, from Fastify JWT. Whoa. JWT. So now what we're going to do, we are going to register this, this plugin and pass in a secret. And I'm calling, calling it change me. Hey, this needs to be changed. Now we are adding this bit. We're going to need to add a couple of other couple of other things uh, which are pretty 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 handy. The first one is a decorator because we want to add an authenticator helper. So uh, we call decorate and we call this authenticate because this is how we're going to authenticate our system. So this is going to be another async function. It is rec and reply. These are fastify objects. And then what we're going to do, we're going to have a nice try catch block and do await rec.jwt verify, which is going to verify our JWT token. And in case of an error, I just want to uh, um, reply dot send that specific error. Okay, so that's actually very simple. This is our, now we can change the error if we want to in here, it's, it's fine. So we have added this. Now, how, do, how are we going to log in? Uh, well, in order to log in, I'm going to create a user called login.js here, 
again export default async function login app ops a then app dot post because these are post and then i'm going to say call login and we're going to need a little bit of stuff in here so i am leaving this a placeholder so we're going to do rec reply then we need to uh, authenticate our app so oh, sorry yay so we get to to authenticate our app so what we're going to do in here is um i am going to create to get a username and password from our body so then i am going to do uh, uh here we go if the username is Matteo and the password is not Olina, we are going to poor man authentication system, never do this in real life. So we need to throw new error. We need to throw an error. So I'm going to do Una authorized error. Now we need this, this errors module. This is import. Uh, errors from HTTP errors. So pretty handy. And then in case we just need to get our token. So with JWT, you get a JWT token and you do app.jwt.sign and we put the username in and then return the token. Okay. So this is our, our system. Now we need one little bit more because we need to validate to validate a little bit more our input. So input S from fluent schema. Here we go. So what we're going to do in here now is we're going to open up the schema and do body S dot object and then dot prop and you pass in the username then this is a string and this is required and then the same goes to password okay so we do a little bit tad bit of data validation beforehand so i demo this also i also demo this to you now what we need to do now is we need to have uh, uh in our uh in our protected route what i want i want to have a uh, well, in our index here, I want to make sure that all routes defined in this file and the file that this one imports and loads are automatically authenticated. So what I can do, I can do add hook and I'll call on request. So I'm adding it to the on request lifecycle hook. This is called every single time a request comes in independently on the function. And we are going to pass in app authenticate, which is the method that we have just added. Now I can do, for example, app.get as something and, well, app does a slash and just say uh, async rec reply. And just say return this is uh, authenticated. And then do, here we go. Okay, so that's it. Now we need to test to test if all of this is working, which is, you know, demo gods. Hey, demo gods are not with me as usual. Uh, add is not, oh, where did I put add? Add, nice. Here we go. So demo gods are not with me. So if I do protected now, it says unauthorized error. Okay. So in order to uh, log in, uh, Coral, here we go. Hey, hey, I'm cheating. So I have, I'm sending in a post request with uh, a JSON as a body and, um, con uh, and my username and password. Now the answer to this is a bit long, long bit of a uh, token. Okay, so what we are going to do is 
take this token, which is actually pretty handy, and then pass it in as an authentication to the authentication. So what we're going to do, we're going to say H header, which is authorization. Uh, it's authorization for all. Okay. Okay, authorization. So it's, we are going to just change this up. So I don't mess it up. I messed up enough during this talk, essentially. Here we go. And, and then protected. Hopefully all of these would work. This is authenticated. Okay, so now this is actually pretty interesting because uh, what we can do is um, we can also add a test for my for for this code. So um, in order to add to to add a test for this route, what we can do is protected. So here we go. So what we can do, we can actually do something very similar to what we were doing before. And await and call protected. Now, this we need to call it as a login first. So we what first we go, we call login, but we need to call it as a post. So we have this URL, and then the method needs to be uh, post. Here we go, and that's it. And we need to specify a body and. We need to say that username, username, it's Matteo, and password is Lina. Here we go, which is pretty handy. And then what I want is I want to do this. I want to call this token because, you know, that's our JWT token. Then I close this called JSON. So I got my token. Now, ooh, now I can actually call here we go. Yep. And I am going to go in here and um, so URL. Here we go. Um, protected. And then I need to specify an header. Note that it's actually pretty important to, uh, mm, yep, error. And then we specify our token. Here we go. And then it's. Now let's see if all this work. Oh, this is authenticate, just a second. Oh, authorization, sorry. Oh, authorization, here we go. So this is actually working. Uh, uh, format is authorization bearer token. Bearer token. Interesting. Okay, so just just a second, folks. And this is not working as it should be. Bearer token. So here we go. Sorry, I need to understand why this is not working. And 
Ah, ah, this is the problem. Ah, you know, here we go. Okay, so now this is, here we go, rest body. Here, here we are. Yes, this is authenticated. So what we're going to do is call deep equal. This is authenticated. Here we go. Okay, so I just wanted to finish this this demo, this long demo, saying that uh, our our Fastify server is uh, Fastify can be used to build application real really quickly using a combination of uh, several utilities such as, for example, Fastify JWT, the uh, the decorators, and uh, the lifecycle methods of Fastify. Um, Note that I'm using currently using a few. Uh, uh, all of this is using like bleeding edge stuff. So the new Fastify v3 releases, uh, Node Node v4, uh, Node v14, and the new native ESM support. So this is not transpile; it's just running native ESM, and it's actually look pretty fresh to be uh, to be seen. Um, so uh, I just wanted to point out that this is a URL where this system, this application is going to, this code is going to live. So if you can check it out and play with it, if you want to, um, the website for uh, uh, Fastify is www.fastify.io. So you can look it, look it up on npm and also on Google. Um, if you have any questions about Node.js, uh, please reach out to me at Matteo Colina on Twitter or Matteo.Colina at nearfrom.com. And thank you, Hope. Hey, everyone. <laughs> hey, Matteo, how's it going? Really good, really good. It's good, been a blast. <laughs> that was uh, that was an amazing demonstration on the speed of Fastify. You know, well, Captain you know, <laughs> our, our attendees seem to to agree because we have a number of questions flooding in. But I, obviously, being a demonstration, I wanted you us to kind of fall back and focus on what inspired you at the very beginning. You and Thomas Delavadova back in. 2016 to say, you know what, let's build this thing called Fastify. How did that come about? Yeah, uh, that's actually one of uh, the great starting points. So at the beginning, I thought, well, I I think there is space for a new uh, web framework for Node.js because I was having some problems with client with both Express, API, Restify. They all had certain things that were not working well in production for some of uh, the company I was working with. So I thought, well, maybe there is, they need, there is a space in the industry for something that is combines uh, having a good uh, um, performance characteristics in production and uh, a good developer, uh, a good developer experience at the same time. And it needed to solve a certain class of problems that Fastify ended up solving. And uh, at the beginning, however, at the beginning, I thought, well, I, this is writing uh, and maintaining a new, um, a, a new web framework is a massive endeavor, okay? It's really, really a lot of work. And um, I'm not going to do it unless I can find another human being uh, to, to start doing this in the first, with, with, to start doing this with. And if I can convince somebody else that this is a good idea, then we probably have a chance. If I cannot, because there's no way I can do, I could have done all of that thing alone. So essentially it was starting from the point of, you know, this is something that is going to be owned by the community. All the community will have a say on how all these things is built and how this thing is maintained. And so that's why it has very open contribution policy, for example, from the very beginning and so on. And uh, it's a fully run on open governance and a lot of those things. So it's um, essentially it's really focused on getting a very good uh, experience uh, for the contributors as well as the uh, users because the users are the contributors. Essentially, uh, the typical tagline of Fastify is, well, uh, when somebody reports a bug is, would you like to send a PR to fix it? Because it's everybody should be maintaining it. The maintenance is spread to to uh, through all users essentially. Nice, nice. And and with there being uh, a large number of frameworks within the JavaScript ecosystem, I was just curious to find out a little bit about what makes Fastify, you know, kind of you know, stand in its own in its own light as compared to the rest of them. Mm. 
sorry, can you re repeat for how, a sec? How does, how does Fastify di differ from the other? Uh, um, okay, there are a few things. Okay, so the first of all, it's uh, respect compared. So it takes the several parts from most of the frameworks. Okay, so okay. it first of all is fully based, it fully supports async await compared to, for example, Express 4. I know Express 5 is going to support async await, but it's still alpha or something. And uh, so, first of all, it supports async await and all the latest things. We are also adding, as what I've demoed, the new Fastify v3 adds some very good support for uh, ESM, for native Node ESM that you can use with Node 14 and Node 12.18, which is great. Um, so we are really keen on adopting the latest and the greatest of the JavaScript spec. However, we adopt, we do not follow a strict middleware pattern. We follow a lifecycle based pattern, which means that there are hooks that are triggered at any point in the, 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 the stages where the request comes in. And uh, uh, at various parts, you can inject code, but if you're not injecting code, these things are not triggered, which is uh, really, really uh, powerful because we can, one of the key things, one of the key problems, for example, when writing large express app is that you have a lot of middlewares where you do, if this route do this, if, and then get, if not call next, and then you pile them up one after the other. With Fastify, you can avoid all of that by having uh, this kind of life cycle and you can set those life cycle methods only for a class of routes or only for some specific routes, which is one of the best way to lay down an app, an application, and that causes also the minimal overhead because those things are only triggered for the routes that require them, essentially. Nice. nice. And uh, we do have a question from uh, uh, Michael uh, Zelensky in the audience. He wanted to find out what IDE does Mateo use? What IDE uh -huh. do you use? So I am a huge fan of Vim. And Tmax, I've been using Vim and Tmax for the last maybe 10 years, maybe 11, 12, something like that. Uh, on Vim, I mean, I recently swept, switched to the space Vim distribution. I was going to try, I was trying it out and I've been trying it out for a few weeks now. And uh, uh, which is kind of interesting to be honest. I like it. Um, slightly different from the Vim config that I was coming before. I wanted to try a little bit something a little bit more modern. So, yes, nice, nice. And um, just uh, because we don't have that much time, which is very, very unfortunate. You know, I I wanted to let everybody who's tuning in know that Matteo is not real. He's not going anywhere. He is. He is going to be is going to be in his Zoom room. So all the questions that you, you that everybody is asking will be answered in the Zoom room as well. Uh, I wanted to kind of wind wind up before that by you know being this is a pseudo chef related uh, <laughs> discussion. I wanted to find out uh, what your comfort food is. Okay. okay, my comfort food is pizza. And by the way, I am Italian. Okay, so I'm talking of you know. Italian pizza. Pizza is kind of a religion here. So let's not confuse whatever you can eat outside of Italy to what you eat in Italy. And it's very important that I'm talking about, you know, Italian pizza. Now, you can get really good Italian pizza in, a, in other, a lot of other places in the world. Most of the time, though, you're just getting something that's, you know, I, it just, it's just another type of dish that's called pizza. No, I'm not referring to that. Okay. And also, if it has pineapple on it, it's definitely not an Italian pizza. Um, so, but if you get a really good Italian pizza, that's what I would call it. That's like my comfort food is also a carb bomb that is going to put, get straight into my belly. So whatever. So that's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of it. <laughs> definitely. definitely. Um, well, uh, I'd like to, at, at this point, obviously thank Matteo for, uh, his time this afternoon for sharing his knowledge and pastify, like, as I did mention, uh, Peeps, he is not going anywhere. It's just more, he will be in his Zoom room to answer all the questions that, that, that have been asked. So, uh, and they are quite a number, uh, as you're as you talking about pizza. They kept, <laughs> the list just kept on growing uh, in terms of more technical stuff. So um, he will be around to answer those as well. Uh, and please do, do keep those questions coming. Uh, Matteo, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. I feel I have learned so much more about, you know, 
server-side uh, JavaScript development, uh, JavaScript ecosystem, and pizza. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure we will uh, be speaking again. Sure. Bye-bye.